the social business idea that uh, Muhammad Yunus proposes uh, seems to me an excellent idea. And it, in my experience, that if unless people are finding new livelihoods, unless people are finding ways to earn a living, unless people are developing their own skills, their own creativity, but probably most importantly, a sense of confidence about how they are in the world, then I think you're wasting your time. And so, I mean, so many of the big projects in the past have been topped out. So in as much as I understand the social business model to be essentially bottom up, then, well, maybe not completely bottom up, and this would be something that, you know, philosophically I would agree with too, that I think you get sort of top down where there are definitely skills and knowledge and so on, and then it's bottom up. And so you might say, well, the top down doesn't work, and that's proved that it doesn't work. The bottom up has limitations, but it's something about where the top down meets the bottom up, and where in that space there's productive, productive things that can happen. And I think it has, it's very good to be realistic, and as I understand, this is the, this is the idea behind the sort of social business, is that it's, it's, a, it's a question of enabling. And ena with enabling comes the giving of skills. It's not just simply that everybody roughs, offs and runs and does fantastic things, because just like us as well, anybody, unless you have somebody who helps you along, somebody who maybe teaches you, somebody who guides you, very often you won't realise your potential. So, I mean, the best work that I would have done would be done collaboratively. People would have helped me do it. And I guess we're all, if we are honest with ourselves, probably that's the way most of us function. Great. I just want to ask you about, um, now let's draw out the Australia-Bangladesh connection here. What's, what's the relevance for this, for this conversation that's going around, uh, going along with Dr. Nurse's visit? What, what's the connection you see between Australia and Bangladesh? The conversation that, um, that the uh, Bangladesh architects have prompted, I think it's very interesting. And I think it's interesting because it seems to me it's, it's bold. It's also um, stepping out of the strict disciplinary uh, constraints. And if that's seriously the intent, then to me that's extremely interesting. And I think architects have, have suffered from the, what I was mentioning earlier, which is suffered from the, the, sort of the, the fantasy, if you like, or the delusion that they can make a huge difference. And I don't think they can independently. Sometimes there's extraordinary things happen that, yeah. But by and large, I think they have to be part of a larger team. And so to hear them say that what they want to do is to, I think, as I understand it, to address issues of equity, that um, architecture is renowned for serving um, people of, uh, you know, with a lot of money. And by and large, architecture is in the service of developers, uh, people with money, and so on and so forth. I mean, obviously there's a great deal that goes on in the public sphere in terms of schools and public buildings and so on, but by and large, architecture does not serve. There's a statistics which I think is something like that, you know, probably 1% of what is built in the world, actually architects have a hand in. And I think that should be sobering for architects because they're not big players in the, in the creation of the built environment. So, so I think that the, the, the in, in being bold by stepping out and saying we want to address issues of equity, we want to put our skills to issues of equity, I think that's, that's, that's a really good move. And I haven't heard it coming from the Australian Institute of Architects or Australian Architects. There are incredible individuals within these professions who do splendid work. Um, and some of them we have heard over this, these last few days in terms of architecture, for instance, uh, you know, Paul, ha Paul Folaris and Health Habitat has been going so long doing, chipping away at the most critical issues of how do you design for better health. And so things like that. But he is probably by and large a rare person. Many people engage and then disengage. But if the Bangladeshi architects can seriously uh, move ahead on these issues, I think that's, that's very interesting. 
At the same time, I think there has to be a little bit of caution because when you get into these issues of inequality, I mean, there's a lot coming up in the world about sort of malfunctioning of the capitalist system, which is an environmental threat. Uh, there's a new book just out by Naomi Klein, and this is what she's, she is saying, that, that, that the problem is capitalism, not so much climate change. There's an enormous number of, of people now talking about, about what the system is doing to the world and, it's, and that we really have to sort of take note. There's a book that you may have heard of called, by, called Capital by Thomas Piketty, which has taken the world by storm. Joseph Stiglitz, who has visited Australia recently, uh, writing on inequality. This question of inequality, I think, is absolutely the driving issue. A few months ago, uh, we took uh, our project, People Building Better Cities, to Medellin, which is the, a city in Colombia. And that was uh, to be part of the World Urban Forum that UN Habitat hosted. The, th the theme was equity in urban development. 30,000 people registered to go to that conference. I mean, extraordinary. And the whole thing was, how do you make the urban environment more equitable? And of course, that's not just a design issue. That's a question about social policy. It's about question of access to education, access to, to work, access to the environment. So it's getting back, you might say it's sort of a utopian sort of vision. And the, the very famous uh, uh, urbanist, uh, Henry Lefebvre, wrote, wrote about the right to the city. In 1968, coming off, off the top of all the Paris rebellions in May 68. And the right to the city is that every person will have equal opportunity to the cultural, the economic, the social and the environment benefits of the city. And we all know that those, those are not equal. Now that's an ideal idealisation, but, but I don't know exactly how the Bangladesh architects in Australia will take this thing or through what projects they would like to take it. But I think it's very good to start the conversation. And if indeed, through the social business channels, through Impact Australia, through organisations such as IBM that seem to be very keen to get involved, if you can start to put ideas into action, then I think that's going to be very good. And I guess the only thing is that with this is, the issues are absolutely huge, the challenges are huge. The thing is to start small, and work with people in communities to see how you can help them do what they want. And that would be my only caution, is that, you know, that they don't be architects, architects. That, in fact, they, they talk about, they actually collaborate really truly with, with, with people. And, and then it's going to be extremely interesting. So, for me, that's, that's what's interesting about this, this, this set, the, the, these last day's events. And I think it's quite inspired to have someone like Mohammed Yunus come and to shift the conversation off course a little bit from architecture, from design, the sort of things that architects normally talk about, to be talking about business models, to be talking about how you can then actually probably get projects going that will have a, a design, an environmental component, uh, but we don't know what that will be. So I think I think that's just great. Yeah. So it's, it's a very I think it's a very exciting and leading initiative. So I um, will compliment them greatly. Mm. Great. Um, I don't have anything else really. Uh, yeah. Touched on a lot of things. Uh